Hey guys, this is Payesh from Vio.com and one of the most underrated aspects when it comes to smartphones is the whole setup process. I mean, when you buy a new smartphone, we just quickly go through whatever options there are to just, you know, experience a brand new smartphone. But the problem is a lot of companies just use this whole setup process to sneakily put in recommendations, adware features, bloatware, etc. So which Android UI has the most cleanest, non-shady setup process and which Android UI has the absolute worst setup process. Well, it's actually surprising, so watch the video till the very end. Let's begin. So here we are, we're actually comparing five Android skins. There's One UI on the Galaxy M32. There's Mi UI on the Redmi Note 10. Realme UI on the Nazo 35G. Oxygen OS on the OnePlus Nord CE. FunTouch OS on the iQOO Z3. And stock Android on the Moto G60. Now we are comparing this to see which Android skin has kind of the fastest and the cleanest setup process. Now I'm not comparing ColorOS here because I've checked and ColorOS and Realme UI have the same identical setup process. So all of these phones are factory reset and we are in the first page of the setup. Now first up you have to set the language and the region in all of these phones and that's pretty straightforward. After that you get the company user agreements on most of these phones except on the Moto G60 probably because it's just Android with no skin whatsoever. As you can see, it's already on the network connectivity page. Anyway, so getting to agreements. First, there's One UI, which also has the most confusing agreement page because most people here just hit agree to all of the above. But the sending of diagnostic data and marketing info is optional and you can skip them and then tap next. Then there's Mi UI, and it's important to note here that the face emoji keyboard privacy policy is ticked on by default when it's actually optional. So the first thing I always do on Xiaomi phones is untick this because I think you should just use Gboard, SwiftKey or anything else. The user agreement on Realme UI and Oxygen OS is pretty simple. You can just accept it. Realme UI does show another terms of service page where everything is ticked on by default. But the truth is the second option, the user experience program is optional. So I'll again disable this and then tap next. Next there's FunTouch OS which has a lot of these pages. There's privacy terms, e-warranty card terms, and then the user experience improvement program, which I'm gonna skip because that just takes user data. Okay, so now all of these UIs are on the Wi-Fi page and so far stock Android has been the simplest followed by Oxygen OS and Realme UI. Anyway, so I can connect all of these phones to Wi-Fi and then they check for any updates and then they get to this page, copy apps and data. Now I'm gonna skip this and after a few loading screens, you get the sign into a Google account page. And again, I'm gonna skip this as well. And then all of these phones get the same Google services page. Here, I'm going to disable the send usage and diagnostic data option. I mean, why would we send more data to Google than we already are? Next, most of these phones are on the screen lock page, but MIUI and Oxygen OS ask you to review additional Google apps. Now there's nothing you can do here, so I'm just gonna accept it. And on other phones, I'm gonna skip the lock screen process as well. Now this is where it gets most interesting. So one UI, as you can see, is recommending more apps. Mi UI is asking for the Mi account. Realme UI is asking for a hate app account if you have one. Oxygen OS is on the co-creation labs page. OneTouch OS is on the recommended services page. And stock Android on the Moto is on the privacy and software page. Well, it's interesting because the stock Android setup is almost done. I can just disable the automatic updates and the stay in touch option that comes next. And the phone then takes me to the navigation gestures tutorial and it's done. Here's the home screen. So stock Android is clearly the most straightforward and you know clean in terms of the setup. Oxygen OS is in the second place and I say this because it's on the co-creation labs page aka OnePlus's fancy name for the user experience program. I'm going to disagree to it then skip the red label club and the screen lock options. Choose the font, choose the navigation style and it's done. So yeah Oxygen OS is set up too and I did not come across any weird app recommendations or any shady adware features. Only the user experience program, which is part of every Android skin out there. So I'm just going to remove the Moto G60 and the Nord CE from the frame. Okay, so now we have four phones. One UI, Mi UI, Realme UI and FunTouch OS. All of them known for pushing bloatware and adware. So what's exactly the truth? Let's see how it goes. So first up, I'm going to take all of these recommended apps on One UI because I don't want so much bloatware on my phone. Next, I'm going to skip the Mi account in Mi UI and the Hate app account in Realme UI. I'm also disabling the auto update overnight option in Realme UI and also skipping the import data option because these are straightforward options and not exactly bloatware. 
Anyway, coming to Fun Touch OS, I know these recommended services are not so fun because I've used this phone. There's Art++ Turbo, which apparently speeds up app launching, but why does it need internet to do that? There's Jovi Home, which is basically a page full of ads and recommendations. Global Search is something you'll come across a lot, but it has a shady privacy policy and this too brings recommendations, so, so I'm going to turn it off. Now, one more option that I don't like is the first one, allow the system to use the permission which automatically gives a lot of system apps permissions. So yeah, I'm going to disable all of these because these are shady AF. Coming back to One UI, there's one more app recommendation. So I'm taking that, but do note this is just a start in One UI. MIUI is on the set password page, aka the lock screen password. So skipping that. Real UI is on the personalization page. And when I hit next and then get started, the setup is done. It's on the home screen. So yeah, surprisingly, no weird recommendations in Realme UI, which is very, very good. Anyway, so we are down to these three phones now. So One UI is on the Samsung account page and I can skip that. And it says you are all set up with a finish button. So yeah, it looks like the phone is set up, but One UI actually brings more recommended services with the experienced Samsung services page. On the other hand, Mi UI is on the additional settings page. And this is very important because I always disable the user experience program. The glance for me option, because this is me UI's wallpaper carousal feature that just brings ads. Also, when you disable this, you'll get this prompt. Make sure to hit the no thanks button below the big try button. After that, I'm going to disable all the other options. Then there's one touch OS, which is on the import data page and I can skip it. Now coming back to one UI, there only seems to be this agree option and this will enable the glance lock screen feature, which brings ads on the lock screen. My galaxy, which brings a lot of annoying notifications discover which is app recommendations basically and more well actually the option to disagree here is hidden i can just tap here and this page opens up where i can just disable all these services one by one so it's actually hidden now after i do this you can now see the skip option this is very important now to me ui i can choose the app drawer and that's it me ui is set up that's pretty decent because one ui and fun touch os are still recommending more apps and services yeah, they're not done yet. As you can see, Funtouch OS is showing me the phone essential apps, which include quite a few non-essential apps. So yeah, I'm just going to untick all of them and also untick this because who needs the spammy V app store? Now that's it. Funtouch OS is set up too. So there's only the Galaxy M32 with one UI left. And you know what? It's still not done. First up, you get this recommendation service and I'm going to disallow this. I'm also going to skip giving my details. And next up, you again get more app recommendations and you have no option but to tap on modify and untick these apps one by one and then tap on finish. And yeah, that's it. Finally, one UI setup is done. Now, I know this was a long process, but at the end of it, I have to say this. One UI and also Fun Touch OS are the absolute worst when it comes to setting up your smartphone. I mean, one miss on either One UI or Funtouch OS and a bunch of recommended apps, adware services get installed on your phone. It's crazy. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. Even me who has set up process has gotten better because I remember in the past, there used to be an additional app recommendations page that's gone now. Then there's Realme UI, which is better than all of these skins because there was no app recommendations, no adware lock screen feature, nothing. It's surprisingly very clean. And I think Realme or Oppo do not get enough credit for this. Now, if you want the most simple or the most clean setup experience in a smartphone, you'll get it in Oxygen OS and Stock Android. See, Stock Android on the mode phones is just a quick setup process with no frills. There's just absolutely nothing. And Oxygen OS is no longer Stock Android, but it's still a way cleaner experience when compared to other skins. So to give these phones a ranking from the best to worst, at number one would be Stock Android, Oxygen OS at a close second, Realme UI at third, Mi UI at fourth, one Touch OS at 5th and One UI at 6th. So yeah, that was our ultimate smartphone setup comparison. But I want to know from you guys, which of these setup processes do you think is the worst? Which Android UI skin is the worst when it comes to the setup process? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Also give this video a like, make sure to share it. Also subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.